Welcome back to the SA100 build series. Today we're going to start on our electronics. I guess actually we started in part 2.0 or 2, I guess I just have it listed as, but I got the motor and uh, servos and our ESC installed. Um, so today we're going to go ahead and we've got our video transmitter is going to go over here, our receiver is going to go over here, and then we've got our camera our GPS module, which I haven't completely decided where I'm going to put that just yet. I'll figure that out as I'm going. And then our actual flight controller, which is going to go, I think I'm going to put it off to the side. Um, also haven't completely decided on that one. So we'll get there when we get there. Um, we've got to put the receiver and video transmitter on the bottom. So we'll go ahead and get to those. Down here on the bottom, we got the uh, two little bays. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these covers and put them to the side. Um, in the other video, I'm going to link up here. Uh, I just went about how I take these um, VTX, it's an AKK X2 SMA, <clears throat> excuse me, SMA VTX. Normally, that VTX or the SMA connector comes straight off. Uh, what I do is cut that off and solder on a 90 degree so that this will go right into the wing and then the antenna stick will end up sitting right there. So it's nice, low out of the, uh, you don't have it sticking up. I've, my buddy has caught his that sticks up when, when he's uh, flying through, just through, not near, but through trees. Um, so I like this little lollipop antennas, but then also just having this really low install profile. So uh, the one thing when you do that, so on this one, I normally, the other ones I've done the other way around and I've had the SMA the other way. This one, I want to try and have the heat sink facing into the bay a little bit more to try and get some of that heat dissipated. Um, I'm not really that worried about the uh, actual screen. I'll either know it's powered because it's showing video or I'll know it's not because it's not showing video. Channel I'm not worried about because I'm using smart audio. Um, so I'm going to install it upside down in here. Now if you notice, clear a little bit up here on my bench, um, you'll notice here that if I put it in there, even with this board all the way up against that wall, it doesn't line up with the hole. So what I got to do is cut the wall. I'm going to cut this wall out a little bit so that it actually will sit over here. So I need to go about that much in. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. So they were about perfect. And that, like I said, I'm just twist this guy right down on there. What I'm going to have to do is just get rid of some of this. Actually, we'll do a little bit of a bevel. And that way, that guy just sits right like that. And that kind of actually holds it in there. Um, I think I will probably put a dab of something on there just to help, but that gets us right in there pretty nice. So the one thing you will notice, now we got that in there, the other thing you might notice, I guess not the one thing, but is that these wires don't quite reach to where we need to go through here and into the bay. We got the VTX in there. <clears throat> Left, try to get just a little bit of slack in here so that way uh, if I do go and install that LC filter, I've got a little room to uh, wiggle around. So that's done. We're gonna go ahead and swap to the other side. Again, we've got our receiver. Um, what I like to do with this guy is um, you want 90 degree offset for the antennas. 
So one I'll stick vertical, and then the other one I will likely cut a line into the top of the wing and just lay it right in the wing. Um, when doing that, you do want to try and keep it away from this carbon fiber spar. We're plenty away from this one. So maybe we just go out towards the, the corner here or something, but it should be fine either way. Um, these carbon fiber spars are a little out of the way. And yeah, <clears throat> but again, we're a little short on wire on this one to get from there to there. So I've got wire. This time I didn't match the colors. Um, trying to keep it so I'll be able to tell in, in when I'm plugging stuff in what's what. So on this one I went with uh, red and black obviously for power and ground and then I did blue for the S bus signal and green for smart port. Um, on this guy the green is smart port and then the white will be for S bus signal. So go ahead and make this extension real quick. Now I got the extension made up. I'm just gonna actually sit this in here for right now. I'll pop them up through the top, I guess. Um, but I'm just gonna leave it kind of sitting in there. Actually, I'm gonna even put this cover back on. <clears throat> Excuse me. just gonna put this cover on here to hold it in there for right now. Um, once we get everything hooked up and uh, we are able to supply power, we'll need to go back in and uh, get to this guy to bind. But for right now, that will work. Just sitting in there. That'll keep it from falling out. And then we'll take these and it's got our uh, VTX and receiver installed, nice and easy. I guess we'll uh, go ahead and pop this camera in here next just because it's another easy one to do. Um, I did, when I printed this nose out, uh, you might recall from the earlier video, I had I printed out the Micro Swift version. Well, the Micro Swift doesn't have a full case. Um, it has like a weird half case. So when Lloyd designed this, he actually put a hump in the front down here so that the PCB would slide in the back and then it would help snug it in there but that didn't allow this case to sit flush. So what I ended up doing is I burn out the bottom. Um, I just made kind of a hot knife um, rigged up type thing and cut the bottom of that out. You can see if you look down in there, it's a little melted. So now this camera does fit down in there all the way. Um, when do, I hate doing this um, anytime I do these because you're really gonna got to put a fair bit of stress on the actual wires when we do it. So I'm gonna feed this back through if it'll even go through. Now in theory you could just plug your camera in, do all your settings and then go, but I like to just leave it in um, on my other S800. What I did is I just cut a line here and a little block and just tucked that wire in. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this guy. So now the camera's in there. Nice and snug. And it doesn't even actually need any glue, it's so snug in there. So I'm not gonna glue it in, I'm just gonna leave it like that as is for now. Okay, next step. We'll go ahead and do uh, putting the GPS in. So I've been thinking about where to put, where I wanna put this guy um, on my other S800, which is very dusty right now. I installed it right here. I think I'm gonna do the same. Um, if you look there, it's I, what I'm going to do is embed it and then I have the wires come out of the side and then I can just feed them over to the, the flight controller. Um, I also in this one have a strobe light under here. And all I did on the strobe light it has a little PCB and I just put a piece of the foam that I cut out over it to cover it. 
Could also put it right here or anywhere really, but I just like how this is nice and easy to just poke it through the sidewall to get the wires. So we're gonna do the same. So in order to do this, uh, first I'm gonna remove the connector. First, I just need it for size. Use my uh, scalpel and I'm gonna go ahead and put a new blade in there now because I know I've been using this for other stuff. Okay, we're back with a new blade. And what we're gonna do, again, this is one of the things I learned from Matt over on the Rag the Nuts Off channel. I'm actually gonna line this up back here a little more towards the back of the bay so it comes out right with these wires instead of coming across. What I'm gonna do is put it where I wanna have it, and then I'm going to trace the shape. Now you're definitely not gonna be able to see this. I can barely see the lines across here. What we wanna do is then make a grid. This is gonna be fun because it's on this glue, but we'll make it work. But you just make a grid across the foam. What we're gonna do is use the cell, cellular, I guess, nature of the foam. And when you're doing this, you wanna only stick the blade down into the foam however far you want, or however deep, sorry, you want the pocket that you're making. So you wanna try and be as uniform as you can with that. There you'll see it's already starting to tear these out. When the cells are all together, they're really strong, but as soon as you start to break them up, they pull right out. No, it's a nice, perfect size. It actually went a little bit over, but that's, it'll be fine. So um, now what I just need to do is, you can see it doesn't sit flush in there. So I just need to make it a little deeper. And that's just a matter of figuring out, depending on what you're using and how deep your blade goes when you're doing the grid. And you can always go back in here and just pull more cells out to get more depth. I think that what I, gonna do to keep this look clean is I'm going to go deep enough that I can cut a square of foam from this guy to get a full piece and actually cover the antenna. Just a piece of foam over this antenna is not gonna do anything. I'll just do a, a very thin, but just so it sh doesn't show the antenna, it just looks gray just make a cleaner look. So we'll go ahead and while we're doing this, I need to make sure that I put it down deep enough. Like the back end is good, but the front end, I need to come down a little more. Okay, that's gonna be perfect. Like I said, I'm just gonna do a real thin. I might as well do it now. See, that's gonna be perfect. I might shave down just a little bit so I don't have to hold it down while I glue it or anything like that. But you can see now it looks, I think, a lot better. <laughs> Other than the fact that it kind of covers up the seam that looks like crap due to this mold. But I think it looks a lot better than having the antenna showing. Final thing we gotta do to get these wires connected to the flight controller and then going to start and set up our iNav is putting some of these pins on the end. Um, as I showed before, I'm, I think two videos ago or something, I got this little kit and it has all these different um, ends you can put on from one to one, one by two, two by two, et cetera, et cetera. So I've had to set these two aside in the earlier video for the servos, because uh, the three pin servos will need those. I'm going to be needing a couple of the four pin. Um, I've got one here on the GPS and maybe even the S bus. So I'm gonna get two of these out and then also a three just in case and then i'm going to need a whole bunch of these pins so i'm going to grab some of these like i said this kit was nice because it came with a ton of pins 
So anytime I need to make up my own length wires, it's really helpful. So looking at this, there are 20 wires, because actually there's 23 wires that I'm going to need to do. Um, seven from each wing, the two here, I'm going to shorten this up. GPS is also going to get shortened up, and then the camera is going to need extended a little bit and shortened up. So I'm not going to do all 20 of those in fast forward and take up all the time. So what I'm just going to do is do one of these wires and just show you how it's done uh, quickly. And then I'm going to just cut to when it's all done. So let's go ahead and we'll start this. So I need to separate these wires out. Um, actually, I'll strip the ends first and strip a little bit. With these servo wires, they're not silicon, so they will melt a little bit when I heat them up. So that'll actually shrink back just a little bit. So the first step I'm going to do is getting my flux, getting some solder. And I'm going to do it also again like this where I couldn't reach. Just going to get a little bit of flux on here and just hit this wire real quick. Like I said, I'm only going to do one of these. Literally only going to do one wire. I'm not even going to do one whole connector because it'll take a while to do it. So I get the wires tinned up. Spin this guy around because I'm being right-handed. This side just works better for me normally. And what I'd like to do, obviously, you can't be soldering on the metal. Or oh, sorry, on the foam, you need something metal. My scalpel handle just happens to work well. I've used it a lot. I know that works for me. And I'm going to lay this end on here. Like I said, I believe I mentioned it before, but I like to solder these on to make sure I have a good connection. Um, I've done where just crimping them and I've had them pull off. So by just doing that little extra bit, it just make sure you have a good connection on your connect or on the uh, connections for your servos and things. Especially for your servo and your receiver, things you really want to make sure that keep good contact. So now so I've got that, I put a little flux in there to help it, and I'm just going to push it, the wire in there and take my little small soldering tip and just push that down in there till it heats up and solders itself to it. So now it's on there good. However, I am still going to go ahead and crimp it also. I need to because it won't fit in the sleeve. And when you're doing this, you need to make sure that you you get get it out of the way. This is where it's nice to have a little bit of separation, but like I said, you don't want too much because you don't want it to uh, be hanging all over the place. And then just crimp that down. Um, depending, sometimes I need to just take something and pinch these guys a little bit to get it. That is then going to slide right into one of these. Now that's good to go. And then, like I said, this one will be good to connect up right here for our servo. Okay, so I've got the wiring done now. You can see the servos are both plugged in there, comes across. I uh, tucked the wire for the camera inside. I cut a little bit of the channel and then taped over it. And uh, GPS and our uh, receiver are plugged in, shortened up the wire for the uh, speed controller. We got our battery lead. Um, somebody else had mentioned not worried about this plate because of height, but I'm actually going to just put it in there. Um, this bottom floor is a little flexy, and I don't care about height because of my battery cover, so I'm going to glue that in. Uh, I'll do that just out of the video. But everything is good. I did power it up and uh, just checked everything real quick, and it is working well. So in the next video, I'll go through some of my iNav setup and uh, get this thing ready to... Uh, get the uh, Levans. I, I want to do the setup first to make sure I have the servos centered for the arms going on them. And then we'll do putting the control horns on the Elevons and hooking them up and then finally gluing these guys down. We'll get to gluing the winglets on and uh, be close to being ready for going out to fly. So again, I uh, hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found something uh, useful out of it. Comments below, questions, anything you got. And uh, like and subscribe, please. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.